Hey everyone, uh, this is Luke here, um, technology guy by day, amateur poker player, aspiring poker player by night. Um, wanted to update you on my journey from ten, uh, from one hundred to ten thousand dollars that I'm doing this challenge to try to build my bankroll online and heads up no in uh, in no limit uh, Texas Hold'em, and uh, I will document here my. Uh, my, my next win. I, this is a second video that I've done. Um, so just a you know little update on what's been happening. So um, I bought in for a hundred. Uh, I was bouncing around a little bit and got a win. So that went up to five eleven, and then uh, I started to buy into some pretty big buy-ins. Like the buy-ins I was in was like five dollars, eight dollars, and I started to go up to the twenties and the thirties. And I've just been getting slaughtered in those. So I'll show you some stats at the end. But uh, what I've decided is to keep on grinding out the 5 and the 8 and the 10 and $12 tournaments. I've been crushing those. And so the winnings from those have been paying for the higher buy-ins. Um, but I don't want to keep doing the higher buy-ins because I want to build up this bankroll and uh, and start to uh, start to really progress until I'm ready for the, for the higher stakes. So let's uh, just document this win. It was another... Um, 500 it was another five dollar uh, buy-in with a rebuy and an add-on um, so let's review some hands uh, queen king under the gun plus two i just uh probably min raise this yeah let's uh make the screen a little better here all right See the stats that we have from the HUD and everything. All right, I got re-raised here. I decided to just flat call this, and I hit my queen. So I th I third pot bet this. He re-raises me, and I just fold. <laughs> so I'm showing the like big takes and the big losses here. So all right, let's see. Left with 72 big blinds. What's next? Eights. And I'm on the big blind. Uh, this guy just calls me with the ace jack. A little sneaky there. I make it four big blinds. Oh, I get another limper. I make it four big blinds. This guy's probably going to fold. Oh, interesting decision with the six jack. And I've got the second top pair. This guy bets 60% um, pot. And I jam on him because I've only got, well, I've got 18 big blinds left over. And uh, that was a pretty aggressive move. And I bust. So I rebuy. All right. Obviously. Um, Sometimes you got to rebuy. All right, let's see here. All right, ace king. Wow, I totally jammed with my 50 big blinds. So this guy put 30 big blinds in. I rejam with 50 big blinds. You know, I don't think this move is going to be a profitable play in the higher buy-ins, but with these lower stakes tournaments, I don't mind. Um, I don't mind. <laughs> especially early in the tournament. Um, you'll get a lot of people um, like uh, just putting a lot of money in with uh, really bad cards. So, And I actually think that's one of the leaks for the higher buy-ins is I'm expecting them to make too many bad decisions. So, um, But I'm willing to throw my money around when I've got big cards like Ace-King like that, even with 50 big blinds. All right, Ace-Jack jamming with my... Um, with my ace jack and this guy was all in with his 16 big blinds so it's going to be a coin flip oh there's another guy in it um, but I hit my ace so that'll work alright I've got 8-9 this guy jams everything and I think in this situation it's pot odds I mean I can call 5.13 to win 8.13. So I just decided to let her rip. 
Um, and I did not get it. Let's see here. Got the aces. Definitely going to raise with those aces. Get called. This guy's all in. Obviously call. And took it down. Queen King suited from early position. I've got 37 big blinds. Someone before me raises pretty big. But I decide, you know what? Queen King. It's a beautiful looking hand. I'm going to call from early position. Um, and now I hit a flush draw. I've got 32 big blinds. I'm just going to check it. See another card. He bets. I'm going to call looking for that flush. I don't hit my card. And I'm going to let it go. Alright, got queens from early position. I make it four big blinds. I've only got 15 to start with. I really want to get the money in. Um, I want to tempt people to try to jam on me. So this guy calls with his ace too. I'm praying I don't see any king or any ace here. And sure enough, it's a beauty flop for me. So it's time to let her rip. And this guy calls with his twos. What a donkey. Right, that's just an example of uh, these guys who... Uh, you know, are really willing to let their money fly. So I uh, got the queens, re-raise it. So I made it five big blinds here just because I've got a limper here. So I'm inviting him to make a huge mistake by calling the rest of the four big blinds. And there he does, you know, that's just, I think that's a terrible play. Um, I've got the queens here, but 24 big blinds left. I make it just a third pot here. Um, now he's got... I got shot and bets it, and I decide it's time to jam on this guy. I got better than the top pair. Obviously a risk. He might have hit two pair or something, but... And I hit a full house. That will work. He's king. Re-raise, obviously. I make it about three times, or two and a half times what he put in. He calls me. I hit my ace. It's just a beautiful flop. I checked it just to kind of make it a little juicy. Um, but I don't want to let him hit any more cards, so I just put it all in on the turn. Take that one. Ace king again. Just showing you the big hands. There's another three bet. He calls. Um... I think this is the one where he bluffs me. Yes. Oh, this is the one where he bluffs me. And then he shows. I think this guy actually showed. It doesn't, uh, but I fold it. I mean, I've only got 30 big blinds anymore. I don't even hit anything. I don't know. You might argue that I should have taken a stab at this one, but <coughs> I wanted to preserve my chips a little bit here. Um, yeah, he showed actually. And, uh, oh, his stats show that he's quite a bluffer, too. Let's go back. Where was it here? Um, yeah, where is this guy? He's a big bluffer. Oh, no, he just calls a ton. So this 45 is, like, how, many, how often he calls. But actually, this doesn't really show him as a big bluffer. He has a three bet, at least not in these 59 hands. <laughs> So, but yeah, he showed, and uh, it was just a stone cold bluff. I can't believe he called my three bet, to be honest. But I'm just flat limping with this Jack 10 suit in. When these early position people come in and flat, I feel like they've got cards. That's been my position lately. All right, I'm on a flush draw here. Obviously, going to call this and see the next card. I'm looking for a queen or a flush draw, or a, or a flush or a spade. And sure enough, hit the spade. So I could get to so a queen or a king, but the flush beats me, but super unlikely. So I'm kind of loving this. I think I should have bet bigger ultimately. Yeah, I remember kicking myself here. I didn't go for enough here because he's, he's got the ace. I bet you he's going to call off at least eight, at least eight big blinds here. But he calls.
tells me, and at least I get a little bit here. Decent pot for the flush. Now I've got jacks. I raise it from early position. Get called by the eights. I've got 20 big blinds and I smash the flop. I've got a full house. So I check it, obviously. Like, there's no way for him to catch up to me. So I don't even care to, like, let it go all the way to the river with nothing. And then, finally, um, the river comes and absolutely coolers this guy. So I make it a pretty decent sized bet, almost a full pot, and obviously he jams. So that was a sweet, sweet hand. Jack 10 suited on the button. Just gonna call. Connect pretty good. I've got a runner runner, straight draw, and a flush draw. So I decide to make a third pot bet. I'm in position. Um, this guy's got a king, but I hit my flush. So loving that. Um, bet again with about a half pot here. He calls. And now I'm thinking, uh-oh, the ace is here. And all he needs is that ace of diamonds. But it's just one card. Um, and he puts half my stack in. I sat there for a while. I don't like having to call off half my chips for uh, half my remaining chips when that ace is right there, but no, just decided to go for it. It's basically all I'm catching is bluffs here, but I got it, so he was basically repping the ace. Here I've got aces, min raise from early position, he's got the threes, and he smashes the set. This was devastating, so I thought I was out of the tournament. And I just wanted to put all my money in. Um, he's happy to just slow play me here. He hits quads. I'm just trying to get value out of aces and just get crushed by this guy. But fortunately, there was some left over. So I've got 12 big blinds left to try to survive in this tournament. Let's see what happens. <coughs> I've got ace five here. And I jam. And this guy calls him with 4-5. I love when I've got one of their cards, because uh, obviously uh, it makes their chances way less. Um, queen 6 here. I'm just going to defend here for the 1.2 big blinds. And see I'm on fumes. I've only got 6.45 big, big blinds left. And I still decided to defend, because my attitude is, if I get any piece of this, I'm jamming. And sure enough, and he calls me with the two high cards. Um, a lot of people do that. Um, but there you go, I got to double there. Starting to work my way up. I've got kings here. Re raised to 2.5 his bet. He's got threes. Uh, he just calls it. He doesn't hit, but he jams on me. Nice another double up. A7. I'm going to min-raise here. This guy's got a6. So now I'm starting to get up in ships. I've got the a7. Now he's got an a6. He didn't hit. I hit my 7. And he re-raises. Oh, this is getting super late in the tournament now. This guy is the chip leader. And I was just thinking, and he was been pretty tight, but I was just thinking, you know what? This guy's got the big stack. I'm not going to let him knock me off of this once. I'm going to just call it. And now he got scared of me because I'm calling, so he doesn't have anything, so he didn't have the guts to continue. And sure enough, he checks, I check, and sure enough, take it with the sevens. And I was thinking, this is so amazing, like, I think there was only three players left at this point, and I'm making good decisions now. So, let's see here. Nine jack, raising. Hit the jack. Half pot, he calls. Now he's got it open-ended, so now I can, so I put 60% pot in there. Um, I'm kind of semi-bluffing here now, according to me. Um, I need an 8 or a king, I've got an open-ended for a straight draw though, so actually that's not so much of, of a bluff. Um, and then he checks and I just decided to check that, so he was fishing. Um, he was fishing for his, uh, his straight draw. 
have got ace two. He calls. It's a it's um a situation where I've got the nut flush draw and um maybe an outside straight draw and uh he's got the top pair and I put a half pot in there and he just jams and I decide you know what I'm ahead of this guy and uh you know I could take the tournament down right now I could hit my ace I thought I was a little behind actually oh look it puts the it puts the percent in there for us so I, yeah I thought I was a little bit behind which uh which I was but I decided to take that opportunity to, to try to knock him out and uh, sure enough I didn't even hit my flush but I hit the straight so that was the uh, that was the tournament so um, now my balance is up to let's see here up to 578 so obviously since my last win I've actually gotten up to like 700 and then down to something like 200 and now I'm up to 578 but going down to 200, that, that happened over the course of like, I don't know, let's see here, when was the win that I documented last? I don't even see it now. Um, but uh, it was a couple weeks ago at least, and um, I've had several sessions since then. Maybe like, been in like 50 tournaments since then. Um, and again, it was because I was buying into like all those big buy-ins. So I'm going to keep it a little bit more tight in terms of just buying into the 550s and stuff. Um, if you look at the stats, if you look at my stats now, it's going to show that I'm still crushing the smaller smaller stakes tournaments here. So here in Holden Manager, you just go here. Yeah, buying less than 10. And... Uh, I'm still averaging 8.47, so I'm actually improving in the small stakes tournaments. 8.47 uh, big blinds per hundred on average, and uh, that should, according to Jonathan Little, be enough for me to continue to make money and um, actually consistently be uh, be raking in payouts at, at this level. So, but the thing is, I'm just getting slaughtered in the buy-in greater than uh, greater than 10. Um, it's disgusting. Let's have a look. But it's part of the journey, right? That's why we're documenting this. So we're gonna continue to learn. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just study. Um, I'm gonna focus more on the smaller buy-ins to make sure I've got this level locked down. Um, just getting absolutely crushed here. For average of 45.78 big blinds per hundred lost on that whole day, 2011. Like no profitable days at those high buy-in amounts okay there was one day when i uh found myself in some good spots but a few days when i found myself in some good spots but i'm losing eight big blinds per hundred at these levels at these higher buy-in levels so pretty sick so i'm just gonna study some more so jonathan little no oh actually a little bit of poker news so there's a huge grudge match going on right now between doug poke and daniel negranu uh, it's a totally high stakes, heads up, no limit format, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. It's online. There was one session in person, and it's like 200, 400, and you buy in for like 40 grand. And Doug Polk right now is up like five buy-ins or something. Um, he's the favorite. Doug Polk is actually well known to be one of the best heads up, no limit players in the world. Daniel Negreanu is more of a tournament player. He plays a lot of different games, but... Dale Negreanu wanted to try to beat Doug Polk as, at his own game. Um, so it's pretty cool because Dale De, or Doug Polk was ripping on Dale Negreanu so hard for like saying more rake is better and just put so many videos out against him. So it's uh, pretty cool to be watching that. And one of the posts that Doug Polk put on Twitter was, uh, a lot of people don't realize just how ridiculously difficult it is to become even a semi-decent heads uh, no limit um, Texas Hold'em poker player. And I'm seeing that. I mean, I'm just getting slaughtered at the $16 buy-ins, the $20 buy-ins, the $30 buy-ins. So um, just time to keep learning. I'm going to be studying um, on Jonathan Little's poker site. And uh, hopefully in the next update, I'll, uh, I'll have some courage to take on some of those higher buy-ins and maybe have a good report for you guys. I actually almost, in one of those tournaments, 
I was getting close to a $2,500 payout. I got through like 600 players and I was in the top, I don't know, 20 or something like that and uh, had to make a move and uh, lost a coin flip. But, uh, you know, uh, just uh, flashes of brilliance here as I start to uh, start to grow and expand my game. And uh, who knows, maybe uh, the next uh, documented win will be something like a thousand or five thousand or something. So we'll see what happens. But thanks for following the process and uh, feel free to like or subscribe or comment. That'd be great.